everybody. There's been uh, some talk on the uh, Discord about UV tools, and I wanted to make sure that uh, everyone uses it because it really, really helps. Uh, I'm going to do this quick video. Sound might be a little wonky at times. Kind of first time trying this. Just, uh, just a uh, quick walkthrough of UV tools and how to use it. But we're going to start with Chi2Box and kind of show you a lot of things come pre-supported. Pre-supported is great, but as UV tools will show you, sometimes things are missed. There will always be things in there that get missed. And UV tools is a great way to make sure, give your prints the best chance of making it through and not having any fails. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, Chichu Box, and I have this. Let me turn this on over here. There we go. So we have Chichu Box over here. This is a file. I'm, I'm, all I'm going to kind of do today is show you how UV Tools works. A very simple, basic, not go into an in-depth thing on UV Tools at all. A nice, simple, basic to really kind of help your print. So uh, to get this thing going, I'm just going to randomly, I'm not going to go through and find every single little island on here. I'm just going to do auto supports, right? So I'm going to rotate this kind of how I would normally do it, which is cock it to the side a little bit, a little bit to the back. Mm, that looks about right. So I'm going to go over here and move to supports. And I'm going to use heavy. I'm going to put, uh, that looks good. So there's my auto supports, right? And if I was Scott Johansson, I would press print from here. And since I'm not, I'm going to go into it a little bit uh, in depth. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit slice. And this will, I'll be editing some of this out here in a second. And I'm just going to save it this way. I'm going to put it on my desktop because I'm in idiot and always lose things in other folders so this takes a while here's the edit okay. done i'm going to go ahead and close this and i'm going to go ahead and open <laughs> normally my desktop looks a lot but neater than that uh, i'm going to go ahead and open uv tools and here's uv tools when you first open the program this is what it looks like uh this has recently been updated there is a new version available i'll probably do that after this but I'm going to open that file, which was bio something. I hope I can find it uh, on my desktop. Biomega. There we go. Okay. So you let it load in, and it decodes all the layers, which takes a bit of time. All right. There we are. So this is starting at the bottom, very most bottom layer. And the quick way to run through this is up here where you have this little nuclear symbol, this radiation symbol, you're going to click that. And it's go it's going to go ahead and compute all the issues. Uh, you can select to have suction cups identified, which I do, but I really don't do anything with them when I do that. Uh, resin traps and islands; those are the two most important things you want to find. The suction cups, if it's really bad, you can go back and do that in Chitu Box and then re-export because you can drill t drill holes using UV tools, but you really kind of don't know where it's going in your figure, so you. I don't like doing it in there. And if it looks like suction cups are going to be an issue with, with it, I'll go back and do it in Chitu Box and fix it there and then come back and do the islands and, and uh, I just had a stroke. <laughs> the islands and the resin traps. Okay. Those are the things we were, we're going to worry about. Uh, the suction cups come up as a, like a light blue and sometimes they block some of it. But you can turn that off if you want to. And I'm wearing a green shirt. <laughs> we just said Jamie Sai this was Jamie Sai's idea uh I just quick whipping this together so all right once it goes through it calculates over here on the left you're going to see this column those are all the islands that it found okay and then these are all the resin traps that it found now let me explain what a resin trap is uh what a resin oh it found no suction cups so that's good and it's because we didn't do it hollow, basically. This thing is solid, which I would never do this thing solid. I would always do it hollow, but just for this. So a resin trap, what happens is, is exactly what it's called. It's a resin trap, and it will trap liquid resin inside or like inside the cured areas. And over time, that can leach out. It can crack your model. It can do a bunch of other stuff. That's why when you get some stuff uh, from off of Etsy or for some other places, where people really don't use UV tools or don't do any of this stuff, you might have a piece that's leaching resin. 
I have stuff on the printer coming off this cracket. Um, but you want to make sure those resin traps are filled in. And I usually save those for the end. So we're going to start with islands. Up here are your islands. And for the most part, there's not that many. I've had other ones where things come in and you have 600 islands that got missed. So, uh, and if, if you look, Chi2 Box on their auto supports missed all of these islands. So if you were to print this as is, those have a chance of floating around in your machine. They have a chance of failing. They have a chance of puncturing your FEP. So you really want to try and catch all of these. And this is what UV Tools does. So when you click on an island specifically, it shows up right there as yellow. That's your island, right? So you can just go through and it shows you how big those islands are. So instead of trying to go and fix each one of these manually, the first, very first step is to try and have UV tools do it for you. So you go over here where it says attempt to repair these issues. It's right there. I wish I had like one of those cool highlighter things, but it's this little box, this little med kit looking thing. And you're going to click on that and it's going to bring up this screen and it will automatically run through again and remove any islands that it tells you, you tell it to. So you can start with five pixels. You can go up to 300 pixels. Any islands 300 or below will be removed automatically. And then it will actually, you can do this too. It will recursively remove islands for up to four layers. So if there's anything above that four layers up, it will take those islands away as well. You can attempt to attach islands down layers. That's what this is. And that's kind of, I usually put this at like four, just in case. I put recursively remove islands around 10, just in case. But I usually put this at about 12. And that's just a personal preference thing. Anything over 12, I kind of want to look at and see what the problem is and see what was going on. A lot of times what you can do too, if you don't want to just do this automatically, you can have Chichu Box open on one side of your screen and you can have UV tools open on the other. And you can go through and look at each layer and find where that island is in Chichu Box and fix it in Chichu Box and then re-export it. I hope I'm saying Chichu Box right. It's the worst name in the world. But that's how you can kind of do it if you want to do it this way. So after you're done here, what you're going to do is click repair layers and issues and attempt to make this hit yes. And again, here's going to be another edit because this takes a little while as well. It attempts to fix all of those issues. We'll be back when it's done. So it finished and here's what you can see what happened. Our islands are dramatically reduced over here on this side. There's not nearly as many anymore. And the resin traps, I think, have gone down a little bit too, but those are all there. And just to clear them now, I'm going to select the first one. What happens is if you go hold down shift, click the first one, go all the way to the bottom of the list, hold down shift, select them all, and then what I do is delete. When you delete, it repairs them by filling them in white, which means it will be a cured area later on. So that you'll see is now white. That resin trap is gone. All right, so all we have left are our islands. Now to fix an island that has been deemed too big by what we told the program to do you click on that and the first thing i like to do is go up here and click difference all right and that's going to show the current layer and then in blue is the next layer sometimes if it shows up green it's the previous layer i think that's one thing i'm not entirely sure about yet but that blue is the next layer so you'll see on the next layer this blue tells us oh this will be attached on the next layer so you could go ahead and just delete this and this wouldn't be a problem, but I'm going to show you how to fix it. So over here, you go to pixel editor and this brings up this menu. The first thing, there's only really one thing I worry about on here and that is brush diameter. If you hold down shift, uh, it allows you to draw on the screen. All of that are now pixels that will be cured in the file if you hit save. So I'm going to change that. I just want to show you something not going to do that. So I'm going to go back again, pixel editor. And I usually like to put this at three to start, maybe five. That way you're drawing in a much bigger thing and you're not drawing one pixel at a time because that's what it comes down to in printing is pixels. And each pixel could eventually become a problem. Most pixels, if it's one pixel size, it's not going to cause a big problem, but it might. So I like to go through and try and fix them as much as I can. So if you hold down shift, it, if you see my square now, it's a lot bigger. 
And then you hold down your mouse and you draw into the white. Cover up most of what that is. You don't have to get all of it. And just kind of solid fix it off. And all that green now will be a new layer. When you hit Pixel Editor again, you hit Yes, and that saves it. And that now becomes fixed for that layer. Go to this next one. Oh, man, that's a huge one. That's 221 pixels, that island. If I go ahead and delete that, let's just delete that one so you can see. There we are. And just delete it. It's going to remove it. And it knows that this next layer is going to be fine because you can tell because of the difference. If you hold down shift, it draws. And you left click, it draws. If you right click, it will remove pixels. Okay. We want them in there. So we want to make sure we do this. Connect it. Pixel editor to save. Island. We got one more. Fix this one. Bam. That's fixed. Save it. Click on this one. Pixel editor. Connecting this. Kind of like drawing with MS Paint, but it works. We hit pixel editor. And we have cleared up all the issues on this file. So the last thing to do is go file. You can either save, which would overwrite your initial file that you put into there. Sometimes I like to save it as a brand new one because if there was something that went wrong, you can go back and start over and you don't have to go all the way back to Cheetubox to fix that. So sometimes it helps to save it as a separate file. But for this, I'm just going to hit save. Takes a minute to save and you're done. And that's how UV tool works. It's a nice, basic, simple, like, explanation I've given so far. There's a lot more you can do with UV tools, but that's the first best thing you can do to get better prints and more successful prints. Till next time, talk to you later.